to be perfectly candid with you, spent the vast majority of Wednesday laying on my floor crying and listening to Earth albums, just trying to feel a little bit more grounded in my existence because um, you did not hear Bernie Sanders stuff out of the race, which mostly just really disappointed me because I felt like somebody told me that they believed in something and then it was like, did you really? Like, did you really care? And I started to get into this very uh, like small hearted place. And I started talking to my, my teacher because I was just saying like, I was really grateful that I started classes, started my day with your class this morning because it really helped me because I feel like I would have been way worse off if I hadn't started in this place and just feeling very full and very whole. And she said, awesome, thanks Mel and Rob. Uh, yeah, so the um, so it was a very difficult experience for me to process, and my teacher said that um, you know you have to remember that the heart is stretchy enough for all things, even this. And we have like the you know the physical part of our heart is just this this organ that pumps blood and nourishment through our body. It's really beautiful, wonderful, and we have this conceptual, intangible heart that is not only our seat of love, but also our seat of our bravery and our courage. The Latin word core is the word for heart, which is also the root of courage. So we have love and we also have our major power and um, like fiery ability to do things that comes from this place. This is where, where we feel like, you know, okay, cool, I can do it. I'm open and I'm ready. And, in order to be able to process things, we have to process them through this place of both love and compassion and courage. So we have to allow our heart to be stretchy enough to take things in. We have to allow ourselves not to be shut off and to be small and to think about ourselves, but also to be out into the world and to be aware and to be able to kind of take um, different perspectives and different um, influence into us. I often say, please lead with the heart and not your shoulders because your shoulders kind of come in and they become this like very ineffective um, like uh, shield. You can think of like football players, they have like the big, you know, shoulder pads on them and they still get hurt all of the time. We're actually a lot more powerful here than we ever, than we often allow ourselves to be. So we'll do some twisting and kind of like stoke a little bit of fire and we'll also work on some heart body and shape through that today. Uh, this in our um, in our connection to the yoga sutras this definitely comes into tapas, which is consistency, it's coming to the practice over and over again, it's the chocolate carry water, it's the action based space of our practice, and this is also relative to surrender because sometimes we cannot change things. Sometimes we cannot change what comes at us, but through consistent action, we can begin to lay the groundwork to change how we react to it and what things might be coming at us in the future. So we have tapas and we have Ishvara Pandihana, we have action and we have surrender, and they, they marry together and they work together in really crazy and difficult, but also really awesome ways. I'm going to go ahead and put the link up here. So if you have not already seen those links, there's a link to Spotify and there is a link to YouTube. So we're going to go ahead and start. Please find your own comfortable seat. And you could have your legs extended. You could sit on a chair. Just do whatever works for you. And let your palms face up. And then take your shoulders and give a couple of rolls up and down and back and then in the other way too just to make sure that we're really keeping things loose and then start rolling the shoulders back again and let your shoulder blades soften down the spine let your arm bones relax away from your ears let your ears lift up so that your spine is long and as you take these few breaths to settle into your body and your practice, let the palms remain open as this gesture of being open to receive, being open to experience. We say practice and all is coming, and they really do mean all of it. 
not just the easy, beautiful stuff or springing up in the headstand or handstand, it's the cool Instagram shots. It's just all of it. It's all coming. Take a few deep breaths in and out through your nose. We're going to start our practice by releasing three ohms together. And you can make whatever kind of sound you want. Ohm is said to be the sound of connection with the universe. You can let out a deep, like, throaty metal growl or just go, ah, whatever makes sense to you. Start with a big breath in through your nose. Big exhale through the mouth. Again, like that. For three ohms. Um. 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 that shin parallel to kind of the front edge of your mat and your back leg I'm gonna draw that back a little bit my foot is not close to my hip I've got some space there and I'm going to draw my heart forward towards my shin which is really intense it's a little bit easier to go towards the thigh but sometimes that gets a little bit twingy in the low back especially if you're there for quite some time so go for the shin and just don't worry about getting as far. You can just be here. Or you can walk your hands forward a lot. Or if you've got a lot of space today, you can walk your hands forward even more. Just find a place where you feel some sensation and then breathe into that sensation as you try to relax the shoulders back and let your heart lift up. And we'll be nice and still here for about three more breaths. One more breath in, one more breath out, and start to walk your hands back in towards your body. We're going to take a little twist over towards that front thigh. You can let this back hip lift up a little bit, kind of spiral open. And what you'll do here is start to stretch out the front of the thigh if you're really twisting up and over. We're going to start to build a deeper stretch to the front of this back thigh by coming down onto one forearm, and maybe taking the other hand back behind. It's okay if the hip lifts, but try to keep the knee down. And you might even take both forearms down, and if you're feeling really open, you can go ahead and just slide down onto your back. But any of those things are appropriate places to stop or return to if you realize one was just a little bit too intense. And if you really lift up and open the hip, you can get a nice stretch without going too far down in your torso. Just stay for two more breaths. And then take both hands over to the same side so you can kind of walk yourself up and over that front thigh and then switch your legs. So you'll have one shin coming forward and then one shin coming back up. You're kind of like a pinwheel shape going on here. And then the heart's going to come forward towards the shin rather than the thigh. Try to lift the heart up and forward because a lot of times we can come into a fold and we might be able to get down further, but we're like 
down here in this small heart place. We want to try to cultivate that feeling of an open, strong heart. One more full deep breath in and out. Start to walk your hands back. We're going to take a little twist. You can leave the knee down, but let the hip rotate with you. You don't have to hike the hip up a lot. Just let it follow and lead with the heart. I often say in a physical practice, any sort of um, if you dance or you have uh, other things going on, wherever you look is where your body is going to go. Wherever your intention is, that's where your body follows, and the body follows. Um, the brain follows the body too. If you know, if you frown for a long time, you feel lucky. If you smile, you feel better. You can increase the stretch on your thigh by coming down towards your forearm, maybe taking the other hand back behind you, and it's left the hip instead of the knee lift. If the knee lift, it can get a little bit tweaked. You want to lift the hip instead. Wherever our head space is at, it impacts our physical space and we can change our head space by setting the right tone in the body. But two more breaths. Take breath in. Take breath out. And then take both hands over so you can kind of walk yourself up and over this front leg. And we'll adjust so that both legs extend out in front of us. We'll take a seated twist. Go ahead and draw your right leg in. Press the foot over. Lift the toes on your left thigh. Take your right arm in nice and close to your hips. So letting you lift up tall, not just resting back there. And then take the other arm up. Lift from behind your ears as well. And then hook your elbow on the outside of your thigh. Push the arm into your thigh so that you can instigate this strong opening of your heart over towards the side. And then you'll go ahead and look over your back shoulder. Keep lifting up as you breathe in. Softening your belly as you breathe out. One more breath like this. And then unwind, come back to the center. You're going to unwind your right leg and take your left leg up and over. And I'll show from the side, you're going to take your left arm in nice and close to you. Reach that right arm up. Keep lifting the back of your neck as well and hook the arm on the outside of the thigh. So I can stay here and I can be small in my twist or I can be strong and open in my twist. I'm pressing the arm against the leg, lifting the heart up and looking over the back shoulder. One more breath in. Soft belly as you breathe out. And then go ahead and unwind. Unwind your legs. And then we're going to come up to sitting on the tail. And you're going to take your ears and reach your ears back. So you can see how my spine stays long. I'm not hunching back and lifting up from behind my ears. I'm going to bring my knees and my toes, my thighs all towards each other. And squeeze those legs in. You can lift your heels up off of the ground. It's a little bit more intense. My inner, my um, hip flexors don't really like it, so I leave them down. But if you feel okay, take your hands off of your thighs. If that's too intense, if you're not able to breathe anymore, just take your hands down to your thighs. Take a breath in. And a breath out. One more breath in. One more breath out. And go ahead and relax for just a moment. When you twist, we have a little bit more room to twist. We let the belly actually get softer. Or think of the squishiness back towards the spine. So we're gonna let that squish back towards the spine as we twist in our Navasana boat pose. So come back up to that strong space. We're gonna squeeze the thighs towards each other, lift the heart up, send the ears back, lengthen. You can go ahead and look forward to your fingertips. On your exhale, open your right arm out to the right so that you twist. 
Try to keep drawing the inner thighs together. Inhale, come back to the center. Exhale, left arm over towards the left. Inhale, back to the center. Again, I might hold on to the side. Inhale, open the... And then exhale, open... Okay, and then come back to the center. Yeah, it's exhale and it's twist. Good three. Thanks for playing, folks. Inhale to the center. Exhale, twist to the right. Inhale to the center. Exhale, twist to the left. Let's go one more time because I messed up. Lucky us. Exhale, twist to the right. Inhale, still lifting the ears. Exhale, twist to the left. Inhale, the center here. Reach the arms up, get a little bit longer, and then relax. And then swing your legs back behind you. We're gonna come onto our hands and knees, coming into table pose. So we're gonna do a couple of postures on our knees in just a little bit here. So if you wanna maybe grab a blanket or a pillow to put underneath your knees, and you can also take some of those poses to put the back knee lifted instead. Spread your fingertips out, push down so that your heart lifts up, curl your toes under, and come back into your first down dog of the day, or maybe your 72nd down dog of the day, but it's the first down dog we've done together. So we'll treat it like the first one. Wrap your elbows to the ground, relax your head down, and then as I'm walking around through my heels a little bit, kind of shaking the tail around, getting the body a little bit looser. Start to find some stillness, relax your heels down, push your hips up, take a big breath in, big breath out, and then look forward to your thumbs, lower your knees down, walk your knees back, and come all the way down onto your belly. I'm going to shift a little bit here. Take your hands wider than your mat space or wider than your shoulders. They're a lot more open than they might usually be. Come up to your fingertips. You're going to just lift up a little bit and kind of move your elbows and your shoulders around. It's very like serpentine, interpretive, creepy, grudge kind of dance you're doing. You can try to like, yeah, I, I notice I kind of make a figure eight and if I try to go in the other direction, it's very awkward. Awkward as fuck. And then when you've been awkward enough, go ahead and come back to the middle. You're going to stay up on the fingertips. Try to roll the elbows back so that the heart is lifted. Stretch your toes back. And then open your chest up and forward. You probably won't go up very far. But make sure that you're not letting your shoulders creep in. We want to expand the chest space. Take another deep breath in. And then exhale, lower down. Now take your hands in by your lowest ribs. Draw the elbows and shoulders back, and we're gonna lift up and forward again into our cobra pose. Still try not to let the shoulders come up, really pull them back. Take a breath in, exhale, lower down. And then one more cobra pose from here. Inhale, rising up and forward. Exhale, lowering down, curl your toes, and press back in the downward facing dog. Spread out to your fingertips. Sorry if that was weird sound, folks. Take a breath in. Take a breath out. And then look forward. Go ahead and lower your knees down back in the table pose. So you're going to take your protein powder, basket of pretzels, whatever you've got going on. You can grab onto that or whatever you've got using as a block. And you'll take your right foot forward. You want to try to give it a little extra twist. You've got some good space in between your right foot and your left leg. And then my left hand is up on that top of my choosing. I'm going to take my hand, press it down into my thigh, and roll the right shoulder back. From there, opening the arm up in the shoulder. I'm really trying to lift and twist here. Keep pushing down into the front foot and then soften your belly to twist open a little bit more. Now reach your right arm towards the wall behind you, the space behind you. Go ahead and look towards that hand. You've got to push strong into your front foot and it's fine if you kind of fall over. 
We're going to lift all the way up. The both arms are open, the heart is above the head. Stay here, breathe in. Stay here, breathe out. And then lift the arms back up, face forward. You can lean forward in the hips a little bit if you've got the space. Lift up and stretch from your heart up to your pinky fingers. Take a breath in. And then exhale, take both hands down on the inside of your legs. You can bring your hands onto your palm. We're gonna take a breath in and lift the heart up. On your exhale, straight-ish the leg. So it can be less bent, it could be all the way straight. We're gonna inhale and move forward. Exhale, pull both hips back. Couple more like that. Inhale, move forward. Exhale, just less bent than it was before. Inhale, forward. Exhale, straight up. One more inhale, forward. One more exhale, pull it back. Stay here. You're gonna leave your left hand down on that top and then start to open your right shoulder and then your right arm. Take a breath in. Soft belly as you exhale. And then take both hands down. And then bend into that knee. Bring your hands down. Wiggle that right leg back. And shake your hips around. We're gonna curl the toes. Press back to downward facing dog. Take a big breath in. A big breath out. Look forward. Bring your shoulders up above your hands. You can always lower your knees down. We're just going to take a quick visit in the side plank on each side. Turn the heels to the left. Lift the right arm up. On your exhale, take both hands down, face forward. Turn your heels over to the right. Inhale, take the left arm up. Exhale, take both hands down. And press back to downward facing dog. Lifting your hips, elbows point towards the back. Take a breath in. Take a breath out. Look forward, lower your knees down. And then take your time setting up that left foot coming forward. So oftentimes we're short here, right? There's not as much room to move around. We're gonna give a couple of extra foot scooches so we have a little bit more room to switch. This is where we're going with this. We're gonna roll the left shoulder back and then take that left arm up and open. Sometimes the left hip wants to creep forward, draw that left hip back. Reach the left fingertips up, soften the belly as you breathe out. One more breath in here, one more exhale, and then we'll reach the left hand into the space back behind us, and you're gonna push strong into your left foot, come all the way up, hard above the hip. Stay here as you breathe in. Stay here as you breathe out. Turn forward. Lift your arms all the way up. You can lean forward in the hips a little bit. We're now stretching and lifting from the belly all the way up to the fingertips. Take a breath in. Exhale, bring both hands down. So you're going to have your hands on the inside of your front leg. It gives us a little bit of space to be able to lean the heart forward and then exhale, pulling the hips back. The inhale, coming forward. Exhale, pulling it back. Three more like that. Inhale, heart lift. And you can keep the heart open as you pull the hips back. The inhale, bend. Exhale, straight it. One more, inhale, bend. Exhale, straight it. And then you're gonna leave the right hand down, sometimes bringing it a little bit closer, it's easier. We're gonna start spinning the left shoulder and then the left fingertips up, finding a twist. Try to relax your left hip down instead of letting it hike up. You want the hip away from the armpit. Breathing in, breathing out. Take both hands down. Go ahead and bring yourself back into your table pose. From your table pose, 
spread your fingertips out. Curl your toes back to downward facing dog. Take a breath in. Relax your heels, breathe out. Look forward. We're gonna start walking the feet to the hands and the hands to the feet. Coming into a fold, bend your knees as much as you need. Just let your head hang down. Maybe shake yes and no. And start to roll the shoulders back. Sending the heart forward, sending the tailbone back. We've got a nice long spine, bigger hamstring stretch here with this activity going on in the body. Exhale, fold it down. Stand all the way up, lifting your arms up and overhead, and then bringing your hands down into your heart. Find a technical difficulty to hold up. Great. Thanks for hanging out. So take your feet. You're going to cross your right leg back behind your left. Reach both arms up. Hold on to your right wrist. Bump your hips over slightly to the right. And then find this side bend. Now if you let the shoulder rest forward slightly, you don't have to close the heart off to do that. What we're doing is allowing the back of the heart to get some stretch right behind the shoulder blade. And then push down more into your back foot. Take a breath in. Take a breath out. Come back to the center. And then switch sides. Taking now your left foot to cross it behind you. And then you'll take your left arm up and over. And then reach over towards the side, pushing into your back foot, your left foot. Let that left shoulder blade come off the spine. So I'm still lifting and opening up and facing forward. And making sure I'm not squeezing that shoulder blade too far back. Take a breath in. Take a breath out. Lifting all the way up. And relax your arms down. Unwind your legs. And then bring your feet towards each other. We're going to sit back into chair pose. So I've got my feet pretty close together. My knees face forward. You can have them touching or have a little bit of space, but if your toes don't touch, your knees don't touch. Take a breath in. Sit your hips back. One more breath in. One more breath out. Stand all the way up. And rest your hands at your heart. We're gonna come back to chair pose and we're gonna start taking some steps back. This is gonna really work our upper butt. They're really good stabilizer muscles. Hands to heart, leave them there, sit your hips back, chair pose. Take a breath in, and then exhale, tap your left toes back. Try to keep the front leg bent, hips back, inhale, left foot step forward, stay tapping the left leg back, exhale. Same leg, inhale, chair pose. Exhale, left toes back. And then with that open heart, you'll do it two more times. Inhale to chair, exhale, tap it back. Inhale to chair. Exhale, tap it back. Inhale to chair. So we're going to go back one more time, taking that left toe back, and then you're going to scooch it back much more. So now your legs are even more open. You might have your top handy. Reach both arms up. So your right knee faces forward. Your right hip is pulling back. We're lengthening through the spine. Going slower is harder. You're going to take your left hand down, and then your right arm's going to lift up. So I'm coming into this twist. And when I come into the twist, I don't want to let the hip lift up. I want to draw it towards the back foot. From here, we're going to do that lift up again where the heart comes above the hip. So you're going to take the hand back, push strong into the front foot, Lift yourself all the way up. Finish your exhale. See if you can twist a little bit deeper. And then we're going to unwind to face all the way over towards the left side. So all 10 toes are going to face the long side of the mat. Just come forward into this wide-legged forward fold. Yeah, hi. The legs are wide. Just finding that easy fold.
One more breath in. One more breath out. You're gonna start walking your hands back to your right leg. So you might take your hands up onto your jar or taking yourself up onto your back toes. We're gonna come all the way up to standing from here. And if you fall over, it's fine. You're just gonna look forward, stand up on your right foot, take your left foot up and then set it down. I'm glad I wasn't the only one wiggling there. Good job trying something weird and hard. We're gonna come it down back in the chair and take all those shapes from the other side. So hands at your heart, feet are close together, knees face forward, sit back. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, right toes tap back. Stay low, right foot steps forward. Exhale, right foot steps back. Inhale, take it forward. Exhale, take the hip back. Two more like that. Inhale forward. Exhale, take it back. Inhale forward. Exhale, take it back. One more time forward. Now this time as you take the foot back, you're gonna take it back and then give extra scooches so you're out really long. And then you're gonna reach the arms up. Now you could have your prop down there on the inside of your left foot. That'll make it so that the floor is not so far away. Lift up. And then we're gonna take the right hand down and the left arm up. So we're in that low twist. Lift your inner thighs, push down into the front foot. You could always put the back knee down. It was much easier when we tried it the first time. You're gonna reach the left arm back, look back, bring your heart up above your hip. Find that full twist, soften your belly, open the heart over towards the left. One more breath in, one more breath out. And then unwind all the way over towards the right, taking all 10 toes to face that way. Go ahead and come down to that wide-legged forward fold. You shake your head around, you can bend your knees, you can have your hands on your shins instead of on the ground. One more breath in. One more exhale. From there, starting to walk yourself over to the left leg. So you're gonna turn the left toes forward again. Come up on the back toes. You can have the hands up a little bit higher so you don't have quite as far to travel. You can also kind of cheat the back foot up to give yourself a little extra uh, boost and power. We're gonna come all the way to standing. Just go for it. Right leg lift. And then right foot steps down. Wiggle things out. And then we're gonna sit back into chair pose again. We're gonna do one more tap back, but we're gonna make it interesting this time. Bring your hands to your heart, lift your heart up, sit your hips back. We're gonna twist the left elbow down towards the right knee. Now, if your left elbow does not touch your right knee, don't worry about it. You're not a bad yogi. You might just have a slightly tighter spine. You're gonna instead take your left hand to your knee and your right hand back to your hip. Yes, I know you're still here. You're pushing your hips back. You're gonna look down at all ten of the toes. Put your weight into your right foot so you can lift your left heel up. You're gonna take your left foot and try to bring it as far to the back of the mat as you can. Go. So you've got this long twisting lunge here. Lift your heart up to your thumb. Stay there as you exhale. We're going to unwind to warrior two. You'll take your left arm back. Reach your right arm forward. My back heel is on the ground. My front leg is bent. Knees going directly over the toes. Take a breath in. Relax the shoulders, breathe out. Straighten your legs. Bring your hands to your hips. Shift the hips back slightly and then slide the right hand down so it'll come either onto the shin or you can bring your prop in and place the hand on your prop. It's not that important that we have the hand down a lot and the body down a lot. What we want to do is find a long spine and long legs. So I could be all the way up here 
or I could um, uh, maybe have this uh, top shoulder a little bit more open, reaching the left arm up and down. Do you want to really open your heart up towards those left fingertips? There's a small spiral that happens in triangle pose, trikonasana. Just a small spiral to open the heart up. Take a breath in here. Take a breath out. Now go ahead and take both hands down to your prop or down towards your front shin. Your left foot, you're going to scoot that over to the left just a couple of inches, so just a little hop. And then bring your right hand to your right hip. We're going to open the right shoulder, finding a little bit of a twist. Try not to let the hip be close to the shoulder. Try to draw the hip back. This pose is extremely there is a lot going on here. A little bit goes a long way when you feel something, and you stay there. If you're looking for more, you can try to rotate the shoulder more open. If you're looking for more still, maybe you reach the right fingertips up. Not necessary. Notice almost nothing else changed in my body when I get that. Take a breath in. Take a breath out. And then look down. Look forward, take both hands down or onto your prop, step both feet forward, find a fold. And wiggle things out, shake your hips around, bob your head. We were standing on our right foot. We're going to change things up a little bit. Stand up on your left foot, lift your right knee up. And then hold on to the outside of your right thigh with your left arm and take your right arm open to the right. You can challenge your balance by trying to look back at that hand. If you're as close to your bed or a chair, you can set your foot down. Lift up to the inner thighs. Try to stay on top of your legs. What often happens is we end up back here in this foot. Try to stay on top of it. Big breath in. Hip down away from the armpit. Breathe out. Come back to the front. Breathe in. And set both feet down. Okay. Good news. Other side. Feet are close together. Knees will bend. Hips sit back. Finding chair pose. In this chair pose, we're going to twist the right elbow down towards the left knee. I want to try to keep those hips back. I push down into the elbow to lift and open through the left shoulder. I'm spiraling my heart open. Strong hands. Push into your hands. Push the elbow down into your left knee, or have hand at hip, hand at knee. Look down, your balance will probably be much more steady this way. You're gonna keep the weight in your left foot, take the right foot, we're gonna take it as far back as possible, you can make many scooches, go. And then lift your inner thighs to the hips, or steady, the legs are engaged. Exhale, spiral the heart towards your thumb. One more breath in. One more breath out. Warrior two. Come on up and open towards that right side. See, so I'm kind of shifting my feet a little bit, just kind of finding the right space here. Hands are out from the shoulders. Left knee tracks over the left toes. Right toes are in a bit. This leg is not bent. This leg is bent. I know it's dark. I wear a lot of foot. Take a breath in. Take a breath out. Straighten the front leg. And then with the hands at the hips, you can really feel that shift. You kind of tilt them over to allow your spine to be long. The top hip can tilt down a little bit, but we still open the heart up. Slide that left hand down. Maybe bring it onto something. And then you're going to keep the spine long, keep the legs long, and open up that right shoulder. Open the fingertips up from the shoulder or don't. Again, notice very little change when I did that. So you just decide what works for you. If you push into that hand like a friend is there to give you a perpetual high five, it will open this top shoulder a little bit more strong, a little bit more strong open-heartedness. Ears off the shoulders. Take a big breath in in triangle. Big breath out. 
And now we will revolve our triangle, which is not an easy pose. We just work with the stuff in the body we've got today. You're gonna take your right foot and you're gonna hop it out to the right a little bit. I also moved it up a little bit. And now I can square my hip forward the same direction as my left toes. And leave the right hand down, take the left hand to the hip. I start to spiral from my rib cage. So I'm gonna open and pull that left shoulder back. My left hip wants to hang out in my armpit. Instead of that, I'm going to reach it back behind me. If that's going well, I might start looking up. If that's going well, I might reach my arm up. To be perfectly honest, my hand is not up at six o'clock towards the ceiling. And I'm more like six to six or something. Five to ten to. Take a breath in. Soften your belly as you exhale. And then take those hands down. Go ahead and step forward into a fold. Now once you find that fold, go ahead and relax over your legs. So we were standing with our left foot forward. We're now going to stand up on the right leg and lift the left foot up. Go. Hold on to the outside of your left leg. Reach your right arm back behind you. Spiral from the heart out. Oh, that's the left arm. Did I say the right arm? I'm usually not sure which is which anyway, but if you're twisting over your front leg, you're doing a great job. Lift up behind the ears. Soft in the belly as you breathe out. Make sure the heart is right up above the hip. One more exhale. And then come to face forward. Go ahead and set your foot down. Wiggle things out a little bit. Good. All right. So good so far? I think I saw that. We're going to do one more standing shape. I'm going to use this to open up the body. We've done a lot of spiraling and twisting inward. We're going to then open up and expand that shape. Just go ahead and bring your right foot forward. Step your left foot back. You want to try to stay up on the back pose if your foot's okay with it. If you need to turn the back heel down and take warrior one instead of press one, that's really very okay. But maybe you'll find more open space keeping everything lined up in one direction. Go ahead and take the arms up. We're going to interlace the fingers, turn the palms up, and press them into the overhead luggage compartment space. You can see how my hands are a little bit in front of my head. I'm going to push down into the feet and press the palms upward. Pushing down to the feet, press the palms upward. Nice stretch for the front of that left hip flexor. Take another breath in. Exhale, release the hands, open them all the way out. And then bring the feet together, do many steps. And then you'll take the other foot and bring it back. The same shape, just the other side. I've got my hips, hips, shoulders, toes all facing forward. Take the hands up, interlace your fingers. Now interlace them the weird way. And you're going to press your palms up to that overhead luggage compartment space. Why overhead luggage? Well, if my hand, my hands back too far, my shoulder blades start to squeeze together, and I have this compression that's really not very helpful. If I have the hands slightly forward, I can still open and lift and I don't have that sleazy, crunchy spot in between my shoulder blades. Strong feet, hard up to hands, take a breath in, and then go ahead and exhale, release the arms, roll them back, step both feet forward. Foot. Yeah. We're going to come down onto our, back, our mat step. Coming down into a seat, bringing the soles of your feet together, holding on to your ankles, rock a few times from cheek bone to cheek bone, and then start to pull your heart forward, maybe holding onto your toes is better, maybe pushing your elbows onto your chin is a good way to help open your legs. Try to keep your heart open to start off here. And now back 
again. One more breath out. And then start to lift yourself up. We're going to turn the legs to face up. Plant the feet a couple of inches apart. Knees face up from the feet. I'm going to take my hands back, let the fingertips face forward, draw the elbows back, push my hands down until my heart lifts up. This is one modification. If you're feeling a little bit stronger, you might lift the hips up to where they're in line with the shoulders and the knees. Your head can go back if you like to. Don't worry about it if it doesn't feel good to you. Take another breath in. And then exhale, lower the hips down. We're going to come back to that bottom canasta, so that bound angle, bring the feet together, open the knees up, and extend the spine forward. You might be here to have that heart open. You might be further in. Wiggle a few times in your feet, if you can find a little bit more open space. Bending those kind of hip bones, meeting the mat. And think of your lower back getting wider. Like relaxing the kidneys away from the spine. Sometimes that helps a lot. We feel more relaxed in a fold. Big breath in. Big breath out. And start to lift your up. I'm going to take the hands back behind us. Try to have the fingertips facing forward. You can also turn the fingertips out slightly, but you do want to have the elbows drawn back and not have the fingertips facing back. You want the fingertips facing as much as possible towards your hips. Go ahead and bring the knees up, feet a couple of inches apart. Either stay here, feeling strong arms with the hips on the ground, which is totally strong, and amp it up a little bit by bringing the hips up. If you're, the front of your shoulders are angry, don't worry about it, leave your hips on the ground. Take another breath in, and then exhale, lower the hips down. Take out your fingers, put water off of your fingers, and then come around into table pose. If you have stuff by the sides of you, you will want to have a little bit more space. I'm a little bit close to my bookshelf here. I've got like about 18 inches maybe in between me and my bookshelf that's probably tugging it a little bit close. Right. And do that. There we go. Got about two feet on each side. So you want to be just kind of aware of what's two feet over to the left side on the first time. So we're going to take the left leg up. Now go ahead and let, oh sorry, that's the right foot. Take the right foot up. Let your left foot pivot back behind you. Reach your right leg back and then open your right arm up. I'm going to open it up out to the side here. Take a breath in. Go ahead and bring both feet down, both hands down. Lift the right leg up. Set the right knee down. Take the left knee up for real this time. I'm going to look over, make sure I've got some space. I'm going to let my foot turn over a little bit on the right side. Drop the left foot down. Reach my left arm open. And open through the chest. Take another breath in. Exhale, left hand down. Let the left knee lift up. And then bring both knees down. Come back in the table pose. So you got your right hand. Spread the fingertips out. So you got your left hand. Spread the fingertips out. That was option one. You can do that two more times or move into option two. Use option two, I come into plank pose. I'm gonna take my right leg. I'm gonna lift it up, let my left foot swivel over, take my right foot down behind me, and then open from the heart up towards my fingertips. Take a breath in. Exhale. Take the right hand down, take the right leg up, and then set it down, come back into plank pose. Just go straight to the other side. You're gonna bend into the left leg, let the right foot pivot over, take the left foot back, open the left arm up, push down into your right hand, so you're lifting and opening up the heart, big breath in, exhale both hands down, lift the left leg up, set the left foot down, go ahead and lower your knees, and then you're lifting that away. I'm going to show option three, 
it is weird enough to kind of follow along with it and kind of peek at other people uh, in the room. I usually stand in a place where you can see me in the room, so just pretend that you can watch for real quick. We're going to go into Downward Dog. You can also do this from plank pose again, but from Downward Dog, it's much the same thing. I'm going to take my right leg up. I'm going to bend into the knee, open up my hip as I start to pivot my left heel down. My right foot comes down, and then I am open, and then wild thing, where it's really fun to hold the horns up, or peace things, or make things up, I don't know. So then you're going to take your hand down, you're going to kind of like lift it up, a little bit of low belly action, set the foot down, downward dog. Downward dog. Let the fingertips up, push the heart up, curl your toes under, press back. You can do this from table pose again or plank pose. Let's take the right leg up, bend the knee, open it up, let your left heel pivot towards the ground, Ooh, push down into the floor, push your heart up, big expansive shape, wide open heart, and then bring your right hand down, right leg lifts up and then press back down. In a downward facing dog. Set up your down dog, strong hands, then take your left leg up, big breath in. Exhale, bend into the knee, open up the hip. Pivot that right heel down, left foot down, hard up to the hand. Reach in and opening up for the ceiling, big inhale. Exhale, left hand comes down, left leg lifts up. Set both feet down, downward facing dog. Take a big breath in, big left side. Lower your knees down, untuck your toes, sit your hips back, child's pose. If your shoulders are feeling kind of tight, you can draw the hands in or send the hands back. Maybe you just rest down here, forehead on your forearm, or arms extended, forehead on the floor. about two more breaths. Settle into your exhale. Bringing the hands in, start to lift yourself up. We're going to pivot around to come and lie down on the back. You'll have your feet a couple of inches apart. Heels in nice and close to your hips. You're going to take your arms down by your sides. Wiggle your shoulder blades together so they're a little bit more drawn in than we have in other shapes. We're going to use those shoulder blades together to give a boost to the heart. If you push your arms down, you can start to feel that lift of your heart up towards the front of your ribcage. Go ahead and push down into your feet until your hips start to lift up. We'll take a couple of bridge poses. This one can be lower. Go ahead and wiggle your shoulder blades in closer. Press your hands down or make robot arms. Or interlace your fingers underneath your hips so you can lift the hips up a little bit higher. Breathe in. Exhale, release the arms. Slowly release the spine all the way down until your hips touch the mat. We'll take that two more times. So you'll push down into your feet, all four corners, lifting the hips up, wiggling the shoulders underneath the back. You've got arms down, hands underneath the back, or these robot arms so you can kind of press your elbows down more. Take another big breath in. Exhale, release the arms, release the spine all the way down. If you have a wheel practice or another back bend practice, you've done some strong um, shoulder opening stuff as you're feeling into that goal for it kind of dig into it another time though. So this time I'll just see you through one more bridge pose, a little bit closer with those shoulder blades the heart is up. Push down into the feet, lift the hips up, do your arm variation, what works for your arm. Now push into all ten of your toes, suck the inner thighs up to your pelvis, reach the knees forward, let your heart float up towards your nostrils, big breath in. Exhale, release those arms. Lower your body down onto the floor. Let the hips breath. Step your feet out a little bit wider and let your knees fall against each other. And maybe place the hands on your belly. 
to start letting yourself rest and decompress a bit. One more breath like this. And start to walk the feet in just a little bit closer to the knees, face up again. Take your right knee and draw it in. Leave your left foot on the ground, leave it where it is. We're just here for a moment to relax the lower back and we'll get a little bit deeper. Take a breath in. Take a breath out. Now release your right knee. You're gonna take the right ankle and put it on the left knee. If this is a lot for you, you can just stay here trying to work that right knee forward. Sometimes putting the left foot up on something is enough. Maybe you take the right arm in between the legs and hold on to the back of the left thigh. Go ahead and relax the left foot, but keep the right toes drawn up towards the right knee so that we have the ankle strong and aligned. If possible, the only spot on you that's really working is your right toes drawing up towards your right knee. Everything else you're trying to let go. Trying to relax and breathe some space into it. One more round of breath. Finish your exhale. Leave the ankle on the knee. Release your hand. Set the left foot down on the mat. We're going to keep the same shape. Just start tilting it over so that your right foot and your left knee come down towards the ground. If possible, keep this right knee facing up. If that's very intense in your hips, you can let the right knee fold in. If you would like to try to leave the right knee up, you can even use your left hand as guidance. Open the right arm up to the right to let that collarbone relax. Any gentle heart opener. It's a little bit more intense of a hip opener. Soften your belly as you breathe out. Big exhale. Unwind your right leg. Set the soles of both feet down on the mat. Let the knees face up. Find that even aligned center space that you started all those moves on the other side with. And then leave your right foot down. Just take that left knee up and draw it kind of towards your chest. Doesn't have to be directly to the center, a little bit off center often feels quite a bit better. Deep inhale, deep exhale. And then taking your left foot Draw the left toes up towards your left knee. You'll put the left ankle on the right knee. And then option one is to stay here. Let the rotation work itself into your hip. Maybe you put your right foot up on you know, your thing, or you can take the left arm in between the legs and hold on to the back of your right thigh. Trying to remove the effort from your body or the left toes coming up towards your left knee. Which shouldn't be a huge effort, crazy sort of thing. Let your lower back relax. Let your hips drift in the direction of the mat. Big breath in, big breath out. Keeping the ankle on the knee, release your right thigh, put the right foot on the ground. 
keeping the same shape in the legs, just tilt that shape over until the left foot comes down towards the ground. Hold in if you need to, but if you're able to work this rotation, let that left thigh come forward. The right hand can be a gentle guide. Opening up the left arm to relax that left shoulder. Letting the belly relax every time you breathe out. Breathing in. Breathing out. One more full round of inhale and exhale. And then unhook your left ankle. Bring both legs back to the center. Find an even alignment in your spine, your body on the mat. And then bring the knees in. Bring them wider than your, your body, about up to your armpits. And then you can hold your hands onto the back of your thighs or reach up and grab your ankles or the outer edges of your feet. We've got a happy Minerva, often called happy baby. We'll give a shout out to our special guest. And rock a little bit side to side if that's interesting to you. Maybe even playing with different bends in each knee. Just gently exploring this body thing we've got going on. Give yourself another full round of breath in this shape. And then release your feet. Bring your feet down onto the mat. Bring them a little bit wider than your hips this time. You're going to take both of your knees over towards the right side and they won't be together. If you can flex your right foot, it can help with the right, or the, I'm sorry, flex the left foot, the left knee might feel a little bit safer. You can go ahead and lift this left hip up as much as you like so that this twist is more focused on opening up the front of your left thigh. You can open the arms out to your side if that feels good to you. If you want more opening of your left thigh and your knees okay with it, then put your right ankle on your left knee. So that's going to be your bottom ankle coming up to rest on the outside of the top thigh. You can take a peek at the screen. I tried to move in a way that might be more visually compelling. Take a breath in and a breath out. Unhook that ankle. Bring both knees to face back up. Find that even space, even alignment in your spine. Feet a little bit wider than your hips. The legs will not be together, but take both of them over towards the left side. You can flex your right foot perhaps, or let the right hip lift up a little bit more, or if your knee, your right knee feels okay with it, you can put the left ankle, the bottom ankle, on the outside of your right thigh. Keep finding spaces to soften. One more full round of breath. Unhooking your left ankle from the right knee and then bringing both knees to come up. Find that even alignment in your spine. And then your Shavasana, your final resting in place, which of course, as always, your own to design. Maybe you stay here and just let your knees knock against each other. Maybe you slide your feet out and let them be long on the mat. You could rest maybe with your legs up against the wall or your feet up on a bed or a chair so you have a gentle inversion. Make something up or maybe come to a seated meditation. If you're laying on your back, give a quick snuggle of your shoulder blades just a little bit closer together so that your heart can be gently lifted. Your heart is open on both sides.
as you settle into your final rest, you have this reminder that we are capable of letting our hearts be stretchy enough to take in, to process, and to experience all things, even this. One of the ways in which we can cultivate that capacity in our minds is to help to cultivate that capacity in our bodies. The purpose of the physical practice of yoga, of the asanas, the poses, is to prepare the body to be ready for the practice of mindfulness. To allow us to sit, to allow us to be, to allow us to experience. Take these next few moments to rest well, friends. Start to come back to your breath. Bringing your awareness back into your body. Deepening the breath and becoming a little bit more alert in your skin and your face. Bending and steering you, start to roll yourself over towards one side. Just taking this moment to pause. Coming in in reflection and gratitude for the opportunity to practice together, even from these distances. Take your time coming up to your own version of a comfortable seat. Choose whatever shape works for your body. Sit on whatever you like, including your couch or a chair. And bring your hands to your heart. And feel our practice. Release 
seeing one own. Taking a deep breath in. within each of us. We have all things. We can hold all things. Namaste, friends. Suggestions, requests for next time, um, tech ideas. How is the sound with the thing? It's great. Good. Good. Yeah. Good. Cool. Awesome. Um, um, keep liking and sharing if you're having a good time. Uh, thanks for inviting your house to the I'll keep posting stuff. Oh, this is what I want to say. I'm doing a 108 day sun salutation challenge. So I'm on like day four, I think, and you can join whenever you want. You can start whenever. Um, it's on my Instagram. I'm doing it and a little bit on Facebook too. So if you want to like check in, I'll post a different sun salutation. It's going to be whatever works for you. It's kind of a cool to keep each other accountable thing. I'm enjoying it. Uh, if you have questions, let me know. If you are interested or able in sending along a few dollars to keep this thing going, uh, my PayPal is uh, at this email address that I'm keeping right here. And it's all over the other things too. I think you're fabulous. Okay. Thanks for being here. If you don't Got have cash right now, don't worry about it. I'm just really excited that you're here. Being here and practicing yoga is what is really important. So that's the good stuff. Thank you. Right. That was awesome. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Have a great we, we love the happy Minerva pose. <laughs> Did she do it? Does she have any? Uh, yeah, we, we were able to get her to do it, but she wasn't very happy for very long. <laughs> <laughs> Babies have like the greatest sense of like, I do or do not like this. Like they're very <laughs> tuned in, you know? <laughs> you know. Alright, thank you. Bye, thank you. Bye, friends. Take care. Thank you, April. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.